In this lesson, we're going to be going through the WK1 user interface and how to set up an SSID on the configuration menu. When you first have your WK1 set up, you're going to hardwire your computer directly with an Ethernet cable to the WK1, and then you're going to go ahead and either power the unit PoE or you're going to just use the power adapter that normally should come in with the shipping. When you're first setting up your WK1, you want to place a static IP address on your LAN adapter if it's not connected to an existing network. So we can go ahead and go to your start option and control panel. You will have your network and sharing center, and then you wanna change your adapter settings. If we right click on local area connection and go to properties, we can select the TCP IPv4 Click on properties and then we're going to use the following IP address. We can use 192.168.1.10, press tab for the subnet mask and then click on OK. Once we click on OK, we can minimize that box and we will open up a browser window and we're going to go to the default IP address which is 192.168.1.250 and then the default login information, which is package and package A. Now, when you first log in, this is the new user interface for the WK1. So you have your wireless section, which is for setting up your SSID information. And then you have your LAN, which is for your LAN settings. So when you first log into it, you see your dashboard. So if we click on the LAN, we're just gonna take a look as far as the IP address information. If you wanted to change it to DHCP, you could just select DHCP. If you have it connected to a router, it'll automatically obtain an IP address. So because I'm actually just directly connected to it, I'm gonna leave it at static address. Again, this is the information. If you wanna change the IP address, you can. And then these are the menu options you have. Your main menu options are status, network, management, and maintenance. We're gonna go through network and go to wireless. And then from the wireless menu, you have radio, security profiles, configuration, and guest network. So starting with the first tab for radio, you have your country code. So you can go ahead and just set this country code according to uh, your location. Once you set this country code and apply, this will no longer be available. This is why it says country code will be locked after you click apply button. So if you wanted to change it for any reason, you would need to factory default the unit. Okay, so country code is set once. If it needs to be changed, you need a factory default. Moving forward, you have your operation mode. This is where you have your access point, repeater, and bridge. Your wireless mode, this is gonna be based on the devices that are on site that are gonna be connecting to the access point. So if the device is connecting are B only, G only, uh, BG mixed, and you can make a specific selection. If it's gonna be a mix of devices, then you can just select the BGN mixed. Please remember that when you have devices that are running on B and there are other devices connecting to the same access point on the same SSID, all the devices are going to run on B, even if the devices are N capable. So just keep that in mind. And then also for the 5 gigahertz, you have the same options. You can do A, N, and you have your different mixed options as well. So it's just as was mentioned before with the other access points, WK1, your speeds are only going to be, or your connection speeds are only as fast as your slowest device. And then you have your channel mode by default, it's set to 2040. One of the recommendations based on the interference, you may end up setting this channel mode to 20 megahertz. And then you also have your channel. Again, this is gonna be one of those things that when you're actually setting up your access point installation, you can do a scan to see if it'll detect any existing access points or any interference that may be on-site or off-site. So you can tell how close those signal levels are. Now moving on to the security profiles, this is a little bit different than the normal W6 and W7. In your security profiles, you can go ahead and actually add your own wireless security profile. So if we want to set this up, um, let's do add wireless security profile, and we're going to set up our own. And we're gonna call it WKSEC1. Our encryption, as usually recommended, is the WPA2 PSK, but you do have other options. You have no encryption, WPA PSK, and you do have the WPA WPA2 PSK. 
A recommendation is WPA2 PSK. You can look at the password and we're just going to leave it at default for now. We'll go with package wireless and then we're going to go ahead and apply. Okay, then once you click on apply and it makes its changes, we can go ahead and move along to the configuration tab. Now on this configuration tab, you'll notice that you have your wireless name just like the regular access point set up. And now you have two different security profiles. You have the package default, which was showing in use before. And now you have the new one that we created, the WKSEC1. So the default has no encryption. The WKSEC1 is based on the added security profile. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to name this We're just going to name it package 2.4 gigahertz. We're going to use our WKSEC1. Now, if you want to hide your SSID, which is the same thing as doing suppressed SSID, then you can select this checkbox. If you want to do client isolation, which is also the same as station separation, so you can separate the clients that are connected to the access point on a specific SSID so they cannot see one another, you can use the client isolation option. Now, if you wanted the SSID to be broadcast on a different VLAN besides VLAN 1, all you need to do is click on the gray box and you have your other VLAN options. So if you wanted it to be a VLAN 3 SSID, you can select VLAN 3. So this will become a VLAN 3 SSID. And then if you just scroll down, you also have your 5 gigahertz. So we'll do the same thing. You'll notice you still have the security profile available here. And we're just going to change this, nothing big, just five package, five gigahertz. We'll go ahead and select the same security profile. Maybe we'll, we want to hide this SSID. And this one, we also want to just have a VLAN 3 SSID. And now we can go ahead and then we're going to click on the apply button. And we're going to apply this change for these SSIDs. So once the configuration has been applied, we can also, if you wanted to, you can go to guest network. Now, if you don't have our package router, then you can have your separate guest network that is set up in the standalone user interface. So you would just go ahead and set up your package guest 2.4. You can rename it, of course, and you'd have your package guest 5. So if you wanted to utilize these, you can change the wireless name and the SSID. Um, I'm going to keep these as default. Maybe I just want them to broadcast that way. I want the guest to be able to just log in without any security. So I will just go ahead and turn these on. And if you wanted to change the manual IP information, you could also change that from the 200.1. Say you wanted to use 100 instead. You can use that. Make sure you also change your DHCP server here for the guest network. Click on apply. And we're going to allow this to make its change. Now, once the configuration is applied, you can now see you have everything ready to go. We're going to go back to the configuration. Now, the one thing that I want to point out that I did not mention before, when you're actually working with these SSIDs and you want them to either be turned on or off, so just like enabling or disabling the SSID to broadcast, you do have your checkbox here. So you want to make sure you either select it to turn it on or you deselect it to make sure it is not broadcasting if you do not want it to. OK, so you have your on off checkbox as well for these SSIDs that you're setting up. Now, if you wanted to add additional SSIDs, you can also add additional SSIDs. And again, by default, they're not on. But if you're going to utilize it, make sure you check the box. If you're not, just keep it deselected. So if we go, I'm going to click on the WK1 here. And now we can take a look at the settings we have. Okay, so again, you'll see your SSIDs are here now. You have the package guest 2.4, the package 2.4, and again, this is another 2.4 gigahertz column. And you also have your package guest 5 and your package 5 gigahertz. And this is also under your 5 gigahertz column. So everything is set and ready to go. So if I'm looking to see if I'm able to... Uh, just get my SSIDs broadcasted. I have my package guest 2.4, and then I also have my package 2.4 gigahertz. So you can see they are broadcasting. They are ready to go. Once you get this connected to a network, then you can automatically get an IP address and get internet access. 
So thank you for joining us today to walk through setting up the WK1 on its user interface for the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz.